assalamu alaikum welcome to vetlec today the topic of discussion is physiology of ruminant and non ruminant stomach so first i am going to discuss the physiology of ruminant stomach before starting our topic you should know that the ruminant stomach is composed of four compartments first compartment is the rumen then reticulum third compartment is omasum and fourth compartment is abomasum and these four compartments uh, unite and combine to form uh, the whole stomach or complex uh, stomach of the uh, ruminants first we are going to talk about rumen rumen uh, is the compartment of the stomach that is located uh, compartment of the complex stomach of ruminants that is located in the abdominal cavity and ex it extends from the diaphragm to the pelvis its capacity is 40 to 50 gallons or 300 pounds of material its normal or optimum temperature is 39 degree celsius its ph ranges from 5.8 to 6.8 and it uh, and this ph um, uh, value varies with the type of feed so concentrates and vfas decrease the ph of rumen uh, while refuges increase its ph and they can increase the ph of uh, rumen up to 7.5 Rumen is further divided into two parts, and these are dorsal sac, which overlaps over the ventral sac. So these two parts are dorsal sac and ventral sac. Internally, the rumen is divided by pillars. Uh, so the dorsal dorsal sac contains on the caudal aspect a dorsal blind sac. So uh, on the caudal side of dorsal sac, there is a dorsal blind sac. <laughs> Similarly, at the caudal aspect of the ventral sac, there is a blind sac, and this blind sac is known as ventral blind sac or diverticulum. Ventral sac contains papillae, which give it towel-like appearance, uh, while uh, the dorsal sac uh, doesn't contain such kind of papillae. The papillae which are present in the ventral sac are also known as pouch. Water forms 85 to 93 percent of the rumen content. while solid content ranges from 7 to 15% so maximum uh, content of the rumen is in liquid form or water or uh, or it is water rumen contains liquid phase which occupies the ventral sac while particular fa particulate phase and gas phase occupy the dorsal sac several gases that contain the that uh, compose the uh, gaseous phase of the uh, Uh, dorsal sac include carbon dioxide which is 65% methane which is 25% nitrogen 7% and traces of oxygen and hydrogen carbon dioxide and nitrogen are purely derived from metabolism while nitrogen and oxygen come along with ingesta rumen is largest of all the stomach compartments and rumen along with reticulum occupy 50% of total capacity of digestive tract and 75% of abdominal cavity the functions of rumen are to allow mechanical chemical and microbial simplification of food so it simply uh, simplifies the food and breaks into it into small particles it also acts as a storehouse of ingested food material then it also undergoes fermentation of food this fermentation of food is uh, occurs due to the microbial fauna and flora uh, which is present in the rumen the microorganisms which are present within the rumen uh, also cause the synthesis of proteins and vitamins uh, and so themselves are the source of proteins it means that they uh, themselves uh, uh, synthesize proteins and are source of protein for the organism then comes the reticulum reticulum is actually a honeycomb like compartment uh, and it is associated with rumen through rumino reticular fold and there is no partition between rumen and reticulum uh, and therefore the materials flow between these two without any hindrance it uh, the function of reticulum is to trap foreign bodies which come along with the ingesta and uh, it also assists in the food breakdown and provides its space so there are three functions of reticulum uh, the first one is to act uh, to trap the foreign bodies which come along with ingesta to provide a space for ingesta and to break down the ingesta the next compartment of the stomach of ruminants is omasum which occupies 12.6% of the total compound stomach and internally it bears various laminae these laminae further contain various papillae due to these laminae omasum is known as many plies Omasum contains reticulo-omasal orifice and omeso-abomasal orifice. 
the reticulo omessal orifice allows the passage of materials from reticulum to the omesum and omesso abomessal orifice uh, allows the passage of material from omesum to the abomessum the function of uh, uh, omesum the major function of omesum uh, is to absorb maximum water from the ingesta uh, and so it works in desiccating the ingested food the other function is grinding of food and third function is absorption of vfas uh, volatile fatty acids and sodium potassium magnesium and so on the last compartment of the stomach is abomasum and abomasum is the only glandular portion of ruminant stomach the rumen reticulum and omasum don't secrete any secretions while abomasum is the glandular portion of ruminant stomach and it means that it secretes particular types of secretions in case of a, a ruminant stomach the abomasum consists of only pyloric and fundic region uh, and cardiac region is absent in ruminants while cardiac region is present in case of non ruminant stomach so it is an exception uh, in case of ruminants the ph of abomasum is 1 to 2 the gastric mucosa of abomasum may be glandular or non glandular the non glandular stomach is present in only in some domestic monogastric animals like horse and rat and in the uh, and in horse and rats uh, this uh, non glandular stomach is separated from the glandular stomach by a clear demarcation the function of this non glandular stomach is not clearly understood yet uh, however it is thought uh, that it is the site of fermentation its reason is because uh, due to the absence of gastric juice in non glandular stomach uh, bacteria are not killed uh, and in this way they uh, cause the fermentation of uh, food in the non glandular stomach if we see the glandular mucosa of glandular stomach very minutely uh, then we see that there are uh, that the uh, glandular mucosa of stomach has invaginations uh, or pits that contain pores and at the base of these pits there is a narrowing uh, that continues into the opening of one or more gastric glands the pores present in these pits can only be seen with magnifying glass so the major surface of the stomach and lining of pits is covered with surface mucus cells and its function is to protect the epithelium of the uh, stomach lining the parietal region of glandular mucosa has parietal glands that contain clusters of parietal cells uh, in neck and proximal region of the gland the neck region of the gland also contains mucus neck cells which produce mucus and are the only dividing cells of gastric mucosa at the base of gland chief cells are present the glands which are present in the cardiac and pyloric region of the stomach uh, resemble parietal cells in structure so the glands of cardiac region produce mucus which is alkaline in nature uh, and which protects the adjacent uh, esophageal mucosa from acidic secretions uh, on the other hand pyloric region contains gastrin producing cells let's repeat it parietal region of mucosa has parietal glands and in the proximal region of these parietal glands there are clusters of parietal cells then in the neck region of the gland there are mucus neck cells which produce mucus and there are also clusters of parietal cells in the neck region then at the base of the gland chief cells are present then the glands of cardiac region produce alkaline mucus to protect from the to be so that it can be protected the esophageal mucosa can be protected from acidic secretions then pyloric region contains gastrin producing cells after it comes the fundic region and uh, fundic region contains three types of cells first are the body chief cells and body chief cells secrete pepsin sorry the body chief cells secrete pepsinogen and this pepsinogen is uh, then secreted in, secreted into the gut lumen <coughs> where it is activated to the peps to pepsin this pepsinogen is uh, uh, activated to pepsin after being mixed up with the hydrochloric acid of the gastric juice then comes the neck chief cells which secrete uh, mucus then there are parietal cells uh, which secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor this hcl prior to its liberation in the lumen is bound to a protein uh, and this protein prevents its action upon the gastric mucosa these parietal cells are stimulated to secrete by the action of acetylcholine gastrin and histamine so the secretions that are released by the abomasum have different functions now let's discuss these functions the function of hydrochloric acid released from the uh, 
parietal cells or auxontic cells uh, hydrolyzes the food and kills the microbes the role of pepsin is in the breakdown of proteins uh, and we know that pepsin is being acti is the activated form of pepsinogen the function of gastric lipase is to hydrolyze very simple lipids like milk and egg fats intrinsic factor is necessary for vitamin b12 absorption and pyloric gastrin causes release of pancreatic and biliary secretions now let's move to the stomach of non ruminants stomach of non ruminants is a v shaped muscular bag and is divided into two physiological regions one of these regions is the proximal region and other is the distal region proximal region works in storage purpose uh, while distal region has a grinding function proximal region has muscular activity and this muscular activity is of weak continuous contraction nature and these contractions which are occurring in the proximal region of the non ruminant stomach uh, they uh, tend to contract the walls of stomach uh, and change their shape and in this way they propel the food to the distal stomach proximal region of the stomach also mixes the food uh, the major muscular reflex of the proximal stomach is adaptive relaxation uh, which is characterized by the relaxation of muscles of stomach uh, so that large quantities of food uh, could be easily accommodated by the proximal uh, stomach in the distal stomach which is also known as antrum uh, peristalsis and grinding of food occurs so there is a slow wave activity in the distal stomach and muscular contractions and the strong waves of peristalsis uh, begin at about middle of the distal stomach uh, and then progress uh, progress towards pylorus when this food uh, grinded food mass reaches near the pylorus uh, the muscles of pylorus constrict so that all of the food particles uh, may not go into the uh, duodenum so it only causes the selective uh, passage of Uh, food particles uh, through it and in this way pylorus controls the passage of uh, food particles through it and allows only those food particles to pass uh, into the duodenum which are compatible uh, which are compatible in their size for uh, being digested in the duodenum some types of uh, sometimes there are some types of food materials like bones and foreign bodies which cannot pass through the stomach into the duodenum with this normal peristaltic contractions uh, of the distal stomach so such particles are cleared from the stomach in, in intervals between the meals by special type of motility which is known as interdigestive motility complex and during this process pylorus relaxes as the strong wave of peristalsis sweeps over the antrum and in this way uh, the antrum uh, forces the material or whole of the material into the duodenum and this interdigestive motility complex normally occurs after one hour of the uh, after one hour uh, hour of the emptying of the stomach from digestible food particles one important thing to note here is that the stomach of non ruminants uh, doesn't causes fermentation of the food products so this microbial digestion and absorption of end products occurs in cecum of the uh, of the stomach of non ruminants while in case of dogs and cats uh, there is there is even no need of fermentation so their colons are also simple